All right, take it away, Princess. Awesome. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Tanya, and um, thank you everyone uh, for being here on the call and uh, attending my presentation. Um, as you all know, my name is Princess Mutasa, um, and I had the great opportunity to serve as an AmeriCorps service member for Keep Your and Beautiful uh, these past 11 months. Um, from November 2021 to October 2022, my last week was this past Friday, so um, had a great service unit. I learned a lot about program management and data analysis um, and incorporating environmental justice and equity uh, into community engagement. And so um, <clears throat> today I'll be sharing what I have been working on in my role as an AmeriCorps service member and the projects I've managed, as well as what I've learned about the role KDB plays in the community since starting my position. So during my service year, I've worked on primarily litter prevention programs, technology improvements, and the Durham Environmental Coalition while providing additional support in our other programs. Um, today, I'll be specifically talking about Creek Week, Litter Kids in Schools, Adopt a Street, uh, the system improvements I made in Salesforce uh, and my work with the Durham Environmental Coalition. So first up is Creek Week. Um, my undergraduate focus and interests were initially in water quality and access. So I was excited to take on Creek Week this year. Um, every year, Keep Durham Beautiful partners up with the city stormwater department uh, to hold, host a week-long litter cleanup campaign known as Creek Week, focused on cleaning up litter near bodies of water and getting Durham residents engaged in, um, in water management. And so in this role for this year, I, I served as a communications coordinator, organizing and scheduling litter cleanups around Durham. In this role, I was able to communicate with different community groups and individuals in the sustainability space and see firsthand the role Keep Doing Beautiful plays as a connector between different community groups. I got to work closely with Laura Smith from the Stormwater Department to advertise and market the program and with Durham Parks and Recreation to coordinate litter cleanups in Durham Parks. And um, I'm proud to say that this year we had over 400 volunteers pick up uh, over 12,000 pounds of litter, um, which they did in only a span of uh, a week in March, from March 12 to 19. So it's a, it's a major impact that um, community members were able to have just by having access to litter cleanup resources. Uh, seeing the impact of this program firsthand and the amount of litter that was picked up showed me the importance of programs such as this and the work that Keep Doing Beautiful does, as this was my first uh, foray into um, organizing litter cleanups. <clears throat> the second program that I managed was the Litter Kits and Schools program. The Litter Kits and Schools program is a litter prevention program that provides a reusable litter kit and an accompanying litter and waste curriculum, as well as educational resources to 20 schools in the Durham area to foster a sense of environmental responsibility and stewardship amongst the most impressionable age group, kids. Uh, the previous AmeriCorps service member, Abby Gosling, worked with the Triangle J Council Government's Clean Water Education Partnership to form the litter and waste curriculum for the program, which was supposed to launch in 2020. However, the pandemic delayed the launch of the program. And when I joined KDB, I was able to take the planning stages of the program into implementation and reporting stages. This program would not have been possible without the grant funding received from the Duke Doing Good Community Grant and the NC Beverage Council to provide, purchase the supplies. Through man managing this program, I created and strengthened partnerships and connections between KDB and public schools in the Durham area, particularly schools that KDB has not interacted with before. I formed a bond with the Bold Group a group of STEM educators in the Durham area to advertise the program and recruit schools from December to January and had the pilot launch of the program from March to June. 
Participating schools were required to submit litter cleanup reports at least once a month back to KDB as part of the program. I created and provided an online and physical reporting form to teachers in the program to make this process easier. So from March to June, 1,470 students picked up over 5,000 pounds of litter through this program. And in order to assess use of the curriculum and educational resources provided, um, created a post-program feedback survey asking teachers to report any noticeable behavior changes and actions in their students since participating. And a majority of the schools reported positive behavior changes among students and half of the schools were able to incorporate the curriculum into their lesson plan. All this information was compiled into a grant report I submitted in late July back to the Duke Doing Good Grant Committee. Uh, through this program, I got to experience um, taking something from the planning stages to uh, actual reality. And um, I also got to gain experience with grant to writing or grant reporting uh, to be more exact, which was an experience I was looking to get as well um, in my AmeriCorps term. And these are just some comments uh, from teachers uh, in the program. Um, in terms of like observations in positive behavior changes from students who use the kit, um, teachers at Oak Grove noticed that uh, the students notice more litter and the damage it does. They were more concerned about the environment and they felt that this was something that they could do something about. They took more control of their own environment and paid more attention to their actions. And another great feature about this program is by providing the litter kits to schools directly, um, they have freedom to do their litter cleanups on their own schedule um, and report back to us on their own time, which made the program more accessible um, and, and possible for teachers who are interested in uh, implementing more sustainability focused lessons in their, in their classrooms. Um, and teachers were also able to find some creative uses for the litter kits. Um, teacher, there was a teacher at Mangum Elementary School who uh, has students create art sculptures out of the uh, picked up litter around their school campus. Um, and teachers at Lakewood were using the litter grabbers to uh, support their compost program at the school. Um, and so these are just uh, unexpected uses that come from having these access to these uh, resources. And this was also my uh, first experience with um, uh, program management uh, relating to environmental education. And here's some more great pictures of kids picking out trash around their school campus. <clears throat> Uh, an important aspect of the original program outline for the Little Kids and Schools program was assuring the program was equitable and that the majority of the schools participating are those that KDB has not traditionally partnered up with in the past. I analyzed demographic data from the district in the areas of student population for marginalized communities, percentage of school of the school, each school's population on free and reduced lunch and each school population's average science performance score to highlight the schools in the program who could better utilize the resources provided. Our equity goals for the program were to have schools, the majority of the school participating schools who had 50% or more of the student population from marginalized communities, 50% or more of the student population with free and reduced lunches, or an average science score below the average score for Durham Public Schools overall. Uh, and this goal was reached as 19 out of 20 selected schools in the full program are, are public and 16 out of 20 of the schools had a student population of 50% or more from marginalized communities. And 13 out of 20 schools had a student population of 50% 50, 50 or more on free or reduced lunch. And also 13 out of 20 schools had science performance scores below the average for, the, for DPS. So this just goes to show that um, majority of the schools in this program um, were those that we, we intended to have access to these resources. 
And across the 20 participating schools, the majority of the participating students were in the elementary level, followed by high schools and middle schools. The third program I have been managing is the Adopt a Street program. The program allows any group or individual in the Durham area the ability to adopt a city maintained road for a year and serve as its steward. Participants are required to sign a contract for one mile of the city street for a year and submit a litter cleanup report at least once a month. After three consecutive months of reported cleanups, active adopters are rewarded with two street signs put up by city transportation city by the city sign shop to recognize their cleanup efforts. We currently prioritize streets with noticeable litter for selection and provide supplies on a long-term loan basis to groups. Since the pandemic started, reporting and active participation in the program severely dropped. When I took on the position, I re reconnected and contacted previous participants to renew their contracts and reviewed the previous resources in the program to make changes. A large question I have tackled with this program is researching and implementing programming changes that can increase reporting and participation by adopters in the program, as well as expedite the onboarding process for interested participants. We had input from a Duke student and the community-based environmental management program on recommendations we can make to the program from interviews conducted with similar adoption programs. I also performed my own benchmark analysis of over 15 adoption programs around the state and country and got to work with the city's innovation team or provide input to the city's innovation team on a cost benefit analysis of the program. Through my benchmark research, I compared program requirements for other programs to what our students are at KDB. I found most programs require less reporting, utilize web-based software such as GIS to simplify the street selection process and automated reminders for reporting. Following recommendations from the Duke student, Arthur Wahid, uh, that we worked with and other programs, I started a working relationship with the GIS team and technology solutions in the city of Durham to create a public facing GIS map of adopted and available streets for the program. This map allows users to see what streets are available and can search for specific streets they're interested in. I've also added high priority streets to the map, which are consistently litter streets that I visually assessed for litter and safety measures such as speed limits below 45 miles per hour and shoulders for parking. Trimble Quay with Technology Solutions has been a great help with getting our GIS account set up and created the map for us to edit and configure however we want. He has also been working on a GIS-based application form that will connect to the adopt -a street map so folks can select and directly apply for their desired street. These changes make it easier not only for folks to select their streets, but also for staff to stay updated on the status of the program. One particular feature of the Adopt a Street program is the variety of community groups that are participating. This is one of the main programs we manage that has a predominantly black and brown volunteer base. Groups feel empowered to take ownership of their surroundings and maintain them when we are able to provide those resources and make the access to these resources as easy as possible. Forming and strengthening these relationships has been a highlight of my service here as my goal for this program was to make the program accessible and ease the burden on the admin staff when it comes to managing it. And from in 2020, there were only 10 uh, active adopters in the program. Um, and now we are up to uh, 17 with two that are still deciding uh, their streets. So um, it's, a, it's a nice uh, uh, improvement to the program. Another role I fulfilled this year was working in and improving KDB Salesforce database. This is not my first experience with Salesforce and hopefully won't be the last, 
as I enjoyed the problem solving and creativity I got to employ in Salesforce. We house all of our volunteer data from events in this program and use it to also keep track of program metrics. However, it is also a challenging program to get used to. So throughout my service here, I've been doing some self-learning in Salesforce and compiling relevant info specific to KDB into SOPs or standard operating procedures. This ensures the next AmeriCorps service member and the rest of the team staff can become expert users of the system without having to do extensive learning. Since 2020, the database has not been utilized much and had numerous duplicate records that were not flagged by the program. I researched and added tools for managing duplicate records while also preventing new ones from being made. In this role, I have served as a troubleshooter slash admin slash data manager, and I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I've also been researching other software and apps uh, and checking on their applicability for the KDB team, such as testing a software known as Submittable for Adopter Street and uh, testing other apps to add to Salesforce. And there are a lot of features in Salesforce that I've improved upon, such as utilizing email templates and creating reports to make metric reporting easier. I created a set of reports in Salesforce that tally up relevant information that KDB reports on such as number of litter cleanups and trash collected each month that automatically updates the data each month. This has allowed KDB staff to quickly summarize metrics and will report them back accurately. The last program I have been working on, but nowhere close to the least, is organizing a DEI workshop with the Durham Environmental Coalition. This program really piqued my interest as I have a vested interest in DEI work specifically applying DEI concepts in the environmental field. So what is the Durham Environmental Coalition? The Durham Environmental Coalition, or DEC, is a collective of community groups and organizations in the Durham area dedicated to equity and sustainability and community engagement space. And it's a picture of Ty and I with some of our um, collaborators in the group. Um, on the left is L.A. Davis Durant with L.A.B. Creek Watershed Association, and in between us is Shamika McNeil with Slice 325. KDB helps manage the DEC, and for this group, I have been serving on the planning group in the DEC, as we have been working this past spring and summer to launch a fall workshop series focused on race, power, and partnership. The purpose of this workshop series is to bring white-led organizations up to code on how their organizations can tackle equity issues and form meaningful and lasting partnerships with black and brown-led organizations. I have been the point of contact between the planning group and the 10 organizations that were selected for the workshop, ensuring participants receive supplemental assignments and clear communication. We recently had our second session this past week on Tuesday, October 18th, and we have one more session left for the workshop in November. This workshop would not have been possible without the extensive collaboration between KDB and the rest of the organizations in the planning group, such as the LB Creek Watershed Association, Triangle Community Foundation, and Slash 325, to name a few. The final session, in November will be organized by Tanya and I, which I will still have the opportunity to attend. And um, that's it for PowerPoint presentation. And I have one more thing to present. So I made this, um, presentation known as a story map in ArcGIS, um, highlighting the, some of the projects I've uh, gone to work on and attend and um, sort of highlight KDB's commit, commit, commitment and uh, mission towards uh, creating resilient communities in Durham and towards environmental justice and equity, as those are things that I also wanted to uh, focus on in my service term.
So here's the presentation. Keep them beautiful, the importance of what we do. Since, since 2004, KDB has organized community greening and litter prevention events in the Durham area. But what is the full value in the work we do? Our main programs targeting litter prevention are Adopt a Street, where community groups adopt a mile of a city road for a year. And, uh, oh, wrong part. Oops, sorry. Um, <clears throat> now, why, why do we do what we do? As an affiliate of Keep America Beautiful, our programs are not just centered on cleaning up and beautifying our environment, but also on bringing community members together and generating a sense of environmental responsibility and stewardship amongst Durham residents. But what exactly is environmental stewardship and why does it matter? Environmental stewardship is the sense of responsibility for your environment, for your surroundings, and the actions you take to protect, maintain, and clean the environment. As Archbishop Desmond Tutu once said, do your little bit of good where you are, it's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. Protecting our environment enriches everyone. The air you breathe, the water you drink, the food you consume, the clothes you wear. And while we can continue to clean up and plant as many trees as we can, inspiring others to think about the impact of their actions on the environment is a step towards preventing litter and waste before it pollutes our parks, streets, and waterways in the first place. Because that is ultimately the biggest challenge. Changing the mindset of everyday people to think, hey, maybe I should make sure I sort my trash for my recycling, or I should leave my leaves on the lawn rather than sweep them up because pollinators could really use that habitat. Now, environmental stewardship goes hand in hand with social justice. As we've seen in recent years with environmental disasters like Flint, black and brown folks experience environmental injustices more than their white counterparts. For example, according to an urban forestry study presented by Duke students in 2016, Durham City Tree Commission in the 1930s primarily planted trees in neighborhoods with higher property values, neglecting red line communities and neighborhoods. In both of these examples of Durham and Flint, it was groups and agencies in positions of power who let these injustices happen. And many more like this contribute to a growing distrust in groups and individuals with, with groups in authority. So how do we address these environmental injustices and engage, and engage Durham residents on environmental stewardship? Community empowerment fosters stewardship. While we organize cleanups, tree plantings, and giveaways, a good portion of cleanups and events are organized by community members. When community members lead, others follow the example and learn to take pride in their environment. We empower community members and organizations to lead their own environmental efforts by providing resources such as tools for litter prevention and gardening events, pollinator education kits, tree keeper and litter leader trainings, and trees and bulbs during giveaways. By providing education and resources, community members have agency to take part in environmental efforts without facilitation by an organization. So how does KDB address inequity? So number one, we provide resources to close the equity gap. On April 4th, KDB partnered with MetLife on a tree planting in the historically black neighborhood Haytai on the 150th anniversary of Arbor Day. Tree plantings in underserved communities all over Durham not only increase the city's tree canopy score, but will also greater serve the entire Durham community. This event was made possible through a grant from MetLife Foundation via Arbor Day. Foundation. Just a couple pictures from the tree planting. Inclusivity across age, age groups, particularly the youth, can lead to behavior change. As one of the elementary schools in the Litter Kits and Schools program, East Bay Elementary has taken full use of their litter kit and curriculum. The school collected 1,100 pounds of litter from March to June 2022 Places supplies from the Litter Kits and Schools program. 
And these are just some comments from uh, one of the teachers who uh, um, facilitated the program at uh, Eastway Elementary School. And this is just another uh, flyer showing metrics from the program overall. Um, just to put into another perspective, um, all the students who participate in the Little Kids in Schools program picked up enough trash to fill up three and a half school buses. So just goes to show you yet again, um, just a short time span of three months, how much uh, impact uh, the youth were able to have. Through Adopt a Street, a variety of community groups take stewardship of the environment the KDB support. One of KDB's veteran Adopt a Street participants, Wall Street Juniors have been cleaning streets in the Albright neighborhood of Durham since 2019. Through this program, the group was able to dedicate street signs to community members that fell victim of gun violence. On May 1st, 2022, KDB and Wall Street Juniors collaborated on a community-wide cleanup along their Adopt a Streets of Liberty, Eva, North Elm, Railroad, and Elizabeth Street, where the families of the people's street signs are dedicated to clean up the streets and provide a venue for other Black Lake community groups to connect with one another. The impact of many of this, of this event caught the community's attention, along with Mayor O'Neill, who also attended the event. The resources will provide not only enrich the environment, but also connect the community to the outdoors. These are just some more pictures. Oh, a little video of Mayor O'Neill uh, speaking at the event as well. Mastering culture, matter, and sustainability too. On September 7th, 2022, we arranged a litter prevention activity for the corporate group Biogen at Longmeadow Park. For this cleanup, we decided to share the history of the park and the impact their action has on the neighborhood, on the environment and neighborhood as well as ask reflection questions for the volunteers to consider. What did you learn today that you did not know before? Did this experience challenge any preconceived beliefs you held before the cleanup? What did you observe that was unexpected? Leaving the historical and social context into the event made the experience more meaningful and impactful for the volunteers and illustrates that the events we hold do not exist in a vacuum, but in places with history and significance. Some more pictures and video of volunteers doing a reflection, which I'll, I'll share a link to this presentation so y'all can look through it uh, and watch those videos as well. Through stewardship, history can also be preserved along with the environment. As one of the first burial sites for Black residents within Durham, residents have been buried in Gear Cemetery since 1877 until 1945. However, the cemetery was neglected for decades long room for weeds and invasive plants to overgrow and became a litter dumping ground. Thanks to, to the work of the Friends of Gear Cemetery with support from KDB, who was once an unrecognizable and heavily littered graveyard, has now been cleared with the hope of preserving the rich history within the cemetery. And uh, I was actually at a recent cleanup this past uh, Saturday at Gear Cemetery and uh, the Friends of Gear are almost close to getting an archeological survey done of the cemetery with the hopes of um, identifying more unmarked graves uh, and preserving them, which they would not have been able to do without clearing out all of the uh, invasive plants and litter that was covering the cemetery. The power lies with the people. When we put the tools and resources within the community's hands, the work they can achieve exceeds expectations. This is how we build not only trust, but a grown community of stewards who will continue to work and inspire others to join in as well. These are some more pictures from um, some of the community groups I've gotten uh, the opportunity to interact with. Um, and thank you to all of the incredible volunteers who make our work more meaningful and achievable. And thank you to all the community partners and groups we work with and to the city of Durham and Durham County for the support that allows us to continue with our mission. And of course, to AmeriCorps for signing my paychecks and giving this opportunity. 
and that that's that's all any questions <laughs>